Hello my lovelies. So I know it's been a while since I've done anything. I kind of feel like I've been out of the loop and I know my hair is all spiky and stuff. I just got through with a nap. I'm just trying to catch up on some rest because let's just face it, 2021 has been so much worse than 2020. I don't care what anybody says. It has. At least for me it has. So I'm going to start this out from the beginning. About two weeks ago, this Thursday went two weeks. My dad went to his local doctor with my mother, of course, because she had to take him. And I went as well because he was having shortness of breath. And he was coughing and he was not eating or drinking and we were concerned. Now, Eli's home because he's sick. But that's totally unrelated. Anyway, we had noticed on Halloween and I made a mention of it. And I said, I'm concerned. I think he's sick. So we took him to the doctor. And the doctor, of course, did a CBC and an x-ray. And he came back and said he has pneumonia in both lungs. I was a little bit shocked. I thought it was going to be bronchitis, but okay. So he said, I'm going to admit him to your local hospital. Okay. That seems like a reasonable step considering my father is 72 years old. He has Alzheimer's and type 2 diabetes. And he's not a very big man. He's very tiny. And um, he's tall. He's just skinny. And, you know, he can't really articulate everything that he's feeling. So it seemed reasonable to put him in the hospital. I sent Eli home with my husband for the night. And I stayed the night with my mother in the hospital with my father. Because I am considered their caretaker. And because they were going to need help. It was obvious they were going to need help. He collapsed on the way into the hospital, so it became a lot more serious than what I had originally thought. So we got him in, did another chest x-ray, and they confirmed what we already knew, that he had double pneumonia. So they start him up on an IV drip with saline and with an antibiotic drip, I can't remember, azithromycin. They started him up on a zithromycin drip. So we got prepared for a very long night because I imagined that he was going to be coughing a lot. He was going to be uncomfortable. He was uncomfortable anyway. Then he started having to go to the restroom a lot with tummy issues, which is normal when you start an antibiotic. Your tummy can become a little upset. So he needed help. He was a little unsteady on his feet. During this time, I noticed that his feet were swollen, which is a sign of edema. But I couldn't imagine why, other than he had become kind of sedentary in the past few days. But before that, he was walking. But as he got sicker, he stopped walking. But I couldn't imagine edema being that bad that his normally skinny legs looked bloated. I mean, I have pretty healthy legs. You've seen them in a photo before. They're not skinny by no means. They're not fat but they're not skinny they're they're healthy legs and his legs looked bigger than my legs and he has by comparison skinny little what i picked at him a lot and called him chicken legs i used to joke him about his chicken legs and he used to laugh about it and um they were swollen and so that night he started complaining with chest pains which of course scared me because you got the edema and then you have double pneumonia and now we're having chest pains. So, of course, I went and I got a nurse and I was like, I don't mean to bother you, but he's complaining with chest pains. I said, unless if I'm mistaken, I said I could be mistaken, he's got a blue hue around his lips. Well, of course, they all sprang into action the minute I said he had a blue hue around his lips, like a purplish blue. It's hard to explain because, you know, the human skin. But the the best way I can explain it, it's like a purplish, bluish sort of tint. Like, just right around there. Like, around the lip line. And, of course, that concerned me because you have, like I said, all these issues. And he can't say, other than he was saying that he had chest pains. So, of course, you know, I was worried. And they came in with an EKG, and they took the EKG, and then he belched really loud. And he said, oh, I feel much better. 
And they're like, oh, it must have been gas, but I wasn't convinced. I was like, okay, I can see the chest pains, but why, why the discoloration around the lips? And the way they explained it was, well, his O2 is low. And it was in the high 80s. They said it can do that. So I was like, okay. So they checked his nails and they were like, yeah, his O2 is a little low. It's, you know, it's from that. So I went to sleep. It was about four or five o'clock in the morning. Had not slept all night, but I finally went to sleep. And then he was back up by seven. Yeah. It was a long, long night, but I was more than happy to do it because, you know, I figured two or three days, we're out of here. The, the pneumonia's going to clear up. It's going to break up. They're doing the best they can. They had him on O2. We're going to be fine. It's just double pneumonia. I'm just freaking myself out. I'm just psyching myself up. Well, no. The next morning, and this was just so weird that I can't even think about it without still getting upset. The doctor came in and told us that he was in renal failure. Still didn't explain the chest pains, but kind of explained the edema. And we said, how bad? And he said, full renal failure. He's only functioning at 5%. And I just, I don't know. I just kind of lost at that point because what? I mean, it was double pneumonia. What the hell? He goes to the doctor every month. Nothing like this ever came up. So, our, our closest university hospital is 100 miles from where we live. And that's where they took him. Which has made it highly difficult. Because also, during that time that they were finding out that he was in renal failure, he had a heart attack. So he ended up in the CCU. And for those of you who don't know what the CCU is, it's the cardiac care unit in a hospital. And it's usually right across the hall from the MICU or the medical intensive care unit. And that's where he is at, is the, or well, I'm sorry, that's where he was at was the um, CCU. He's not there anymore. So he was in the CCU and his kidneys were functioning at 5%. They were giving him something to take the fluid off because he had fluid on his lungs, fluid on his, uh, fluid build up on his kidneys, fluid build up on his heart, just fluid everywhere. So they were giving him stuff to try to drain the fluids off. They had him on a Foley catheter to try to drain and get him to urinate. The kidneys were not picking up at all and his confusion was getting worse and his agitation was getting worse and then we found out his heart was only functioning at 25 to 30 percent yeah so the test they wanted to do to check the right side of the heart takes like a, um, a dye and the dye can mess with your kidneys so they didn't want to do that and use the contrast dye because they were afraid that it would, you know, mess with his kidneys. So they held off for as long as they could. And finally they had to, because like I said, the heart function was failing. He was down to 25 to 30% and they had no clue still what was going on. So they did the test and they found out that he had not one, not two, but three blockages plus a stem coming from the heart that was completely filled with heart disease. So we were looking at open heart, but because of the kidneys, open heart was off the table. So the last I heard, they were talking about doing heart stents to try to increase the function of the heart. <sighs> last I heard, I, I have not been able to go there like I want to because Eli is sick again and um, a whole lot of children in his pre-K are sick and they're talking about shutting down their pre-K early before Thanksgiving and my husband still has to work which leaves me as the only caretaker and I cannot take my four-year-old son who is sick up to the MICU 
to see my father because obviously for obvious reasons that's just not a smart thing to do and I wouldn't do that to him anyway but last I heard and I'll let you know if I hear anything else they're talking about doing heart stents and will it work we don't know are we hoping it'll work of course now he's already had his first dose of dialysis and they said he did really well to that but as far as I know that's going to be the rest of his life and there are decisions that have to be made, big decisions, and decisions that we were hoping would hold off for another at least three or four years, but it's just not happening. I guess we already got our three or four years, three or four years ago, you know, it's like this past three or four years. He was in the hospital in 2018, and so it's been three years since we first found out that he had Alzheimer's. So, I guess we've already had our three years. And that's a shame because it went by so fast. But we're not giving up hope. We're still fighting the good fight. It's just that he is 100 miles away. And no, you can't stay with him when they're in the MICU or the CCU. Or else my mother would be staying there. And I would be helping her. But they won't let you right now. Well, I don't think they ever would let you stay in the MICU with a patient. I'm not really sure how that works because I never had anybody in the MICU or the CCU. So I don't know if it's just COVID or if, um, well, I just thought, or if um, this has always been this way. I'm not really sure. If anybody knows, comment below. All right. Well, I will update you as soon as I hear something. Hopefully today I will hear whether or not they're going to do the stents or not and I can update you on what's going on. Alright, bye. Hello my lovelies. So I said I would be back as soon as I knew anything about my dad. Now from your perspective it's just been a few minutes but the fact of the matter is it's been a few days. I know it's kind of weird because like I just got the shower and in my last one I was like I had just got out of the shower and well in my picture I had but when I actually did the video you know, I don't really know what I've just done. Anyway, oh my gosh, it's been crazy. Okay, so the last time I talked to you, I told you that my dad was in a university hospital that is not quite so local to us. It's about 100 miles there and 100 miles back, obviously. So, it's quite a way away. And his heart was functioning at 25 to 30%, and his kidneys were functioning at 5%. And he was in the CCU at this place. And they had put a perm cath in for dialysis. Because obviously that's the next option. It's about the only option right now. And they were talking about either doing open heart or stents on his heart to help his incre increase his um, heart function. Well, he's out of the CCU and he's in the MICU or the ICU in the university hospital. So that's kind of a step in the right direction. Not as big a step as I wanted, but I'll take what I can get. And they did put the perm cath in and they did do one dose of um, dialysis and they said he reacted well to it. Um, he had been vomiting, but they found out that an antibiotic that they had him on for um, a UTI, he was actually allergic to. So they changed antibiotics and he's able to eat now. He is going to have to have physical therapy because he has not been walking. So physical therapy has begun. And now they're talking that they're gonna put the heart stents in this Friday, which is very scary. And you know, we're all very worried, but they assure us that they're gonna do the best they can to keep him comfortable. And of course he's gonna be sedated and keep him well while he's in there but I can't help but worry. Um, after that, you know, hopefully everything goes as well as can be expected considering what else going on and his heart function picks up and he'll be moved into a regular room. That's our hope. After that, he's going to have to do 100 days in um, like a retirement home, a nursing home, if you will, because just the amount of care that he's going to need, we can't do. My mother had polio when she was young and she wears a leg brace from her hip to her foot and she's just in no position right now to take care of somebody like that and I have Elijah who has been sick all this week since last Friday another round of problems 
with him and we're taking him to his general practitioner tomorrow to see if there's something more that we can do to help him and or if there's something we need to change in his life um, so that might require testing and going to specialists to see what's going on with him because he needs to return to normal life he needs to go back to school he's missed all this week and now here comes Thanksgiving so we need to figure out what's going on with Eli so my plate's been overly full and unfortunately it comes at the worst time possible because like I said here comes the holidays and you know not only I mean are the schools shut down but everything's shut down so you know or they will be shut down for the holidays so you see there's that facing us but I know my dad's in good hands and even though it's rough it's still the best possible choice for him because there's no way we could take care of him at home there's just no way and yeah, it upsets me, obviously, but I want him to have the best possible chance medically. And I just can't do that here. I can't do that at home. Now, after his 100 days, we'll see. And maybe he'll come home, but there's a chance that he may not. And we have to accept that because it's hard and it's upsetting, but it's just how life is. It depends on my mom and how much she's willing to change her life and you know stuff like that because she's probably going to have to sell the family home and that's rough to have to say but it's just something that's going to have to happen and I want to be there for them as much as possible but at the same time I have to take care of my family as well and yes they're my family but my kids my kids my children have to be taken care of and that means Eli so as much as I love my father I know that he's in good hands so I have to take care of my son and but still I'm helping I've driven the trip to this place twice twice so it's a hundred miles there a hundred miles back twice 400 miles I've driven to make sure that my dad's not alone we were there when they put in the perm calf and you know it was tough I mean it was not easy having to see him like that and you know know that that was taking place but we got through it and you know he was able to receive dialysis so there's that and um, I'm just you know dealing with my own stuff you see it's a bit in the background <laughs> so you know that's just the way it is I don't really have a whole lot to say because that's basically just the gist of things I'll let you know when we find out anything about Eli if we find out anything new about Eli um, I'll keep you updated, you know, just stay tuned, and I hope that you're all staying safe out there, and I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. You all deserve it. Bye.